So the story behind the field running picture is pretty funny. Back when I worked for the marketing agency in Dallas, we used to have this party called Mistake at the Plate every year, which is where the entire company, about 200 people in Dallas, would go to the opening day of the Rangers game. And I had been at the company for probably six months at this point, maybe eight months, a little bit more. And uh, so I'm still relatively new. And we get there and we're pre-game and we're tailgating. And the CEO comes up to me and he goes, Pinsley, I'll give you a thousand bucks if you steal second base from center field. And I'll give you an extra hundred bucks if you slide head first. And I remember him telling me this and I was like, I think this guy's serious. Like, and so like when it kind of clicked, like it took me a couple minutes, but then I thought about, I was like, son of a bitch. I'm getting on this field today. I knew it right then and there that I was going to do it because it just seemed right. For as dumb as it was, it just seemed like the right decision. And so I'm kind of going the whole game, like kind of miserable, like trying not to drink too much so I don't just collapse on the field as I'm running. And uh, so I wait till the middle of the eighth inning because I don't want to interrupt the game. I wanted to stay for as long as possible. And uh, I'm, I'm not even a Rangers fan, so I'm wearing a Nashville Predators t-shirt because I've never even been to a Rangers game before. And I didn't want to look like an idiot out there wearing that, so I looked at the guy next to me who worked at our company, and I was like, hey man, will you, will you trade t-shirts with me? Like, he was like, what? I was like, I don't want to look like a douchebag out there wearing this. Like, you have a Ranger shirt, I was, can I use that? He was like, what are you talking about? I was like, ah, screw it, I don't have time for this, I gotta go. Because I didn't want to wait for the game to start and ruin it. So at that point, I just walked down to the front row of center field, where our seats were, and I look over and it is, <laughs> It's not an easy jump. It is like four and a half to five feet across and down to the outfield wall from the center field where the bleachers are. And down in between that, there's a 25 foot drop to concrete. And a guy, last year, a guy literally died trying to catch a foul ball. He fell over and died doing it. So it was really dangerous. And so I look at this random guy sitting right there. I was like, is this a bad idea? He goes, this is a terrible idea. I was like, ah, screw it. I'm too far at this point. So I'm not even thinking at this point. I'm just kind of going. And I, get, I remember I kind of hopped on one side of the fence, like got both my feet balanced, and I just kind of took a leap. And, uh, I'll never, and I caught myself and then hung down as far as I could. And before I knew it, I was on the field. Like worst case scenario, I'm like fall down, break my ankle at the warning track, and then like they just have to haul me off with security and I ruin everything. Uh, so I just remember I took off and uh, first thing I did as I'm going, I like waved to the center field like an idiot. I was like, hey! And he just started pointing down, I think, to try and signal to security that I was coming. And then before I knew it, I was weaving between the shortstop and the uh, second base umpire. And uh, I had slid headfirst into second base and touched it. And I'll never forget how good it felt to touch that base. Because one of the, uh, one of the restrictions on the bet was that I couldn't get touched by a security guard or an ump or a player on route to second base. So when I touched that base, it was like, validation, like, fine, like, yes, this was a dumb decision, but I made the, I won the bet, uh, and I know the CEO is gonna respect it one way or the other, and he's the most important guy in my job right now, so that's all that matters. So at that point, like, I didn't want to be on the field, so I'm just kinda like, woo, like, go Rangers, trying to pump up people. I went up to the second baseman for the Blue Jays, I think it was Aaron Hill, and I patted him on the back, I was like, what's up, baby? Almost turned out to be a felony. They talked to me about that when I was taken back. Didn't end up being one, so I got lucky. And then at that point, I just kind of like walked my way to, to the pitcher's mound waiting for the guards to get there. And it looks like I'm like in a sprint in the picture, but I'm not. I literally just kind of took a step out of the way and just wanted to avoid the guard. I didn't want to get speared in front of everyone and look like an idiot. So then at that point, I'm like, all right, you got me, you got me. The, uh, they get three guards, they got two grabbing me, one kind of walking behind me. And I'll never forget the walk down the third baseline because it had been cloudy the entire game and like magically like the sun had like just popped up like right as I was doing this, it was crazy. And just walking down the third baseline, the fans were going nuts. They loved it. Like I just remember seeing thousands of pictures and people like, woo! And it was just like, even though I'm like with restrained by three guards realizing I'm probably going to jail, I'm like, this is the happiest moment of my life! <laughs> and uh, so then they take me into like this little like kind of holding area and the cops like want to get mad at me but first off, I don't even have an ID on me. They're like, first things first, they have an ID. I don't have an ID because I lost my ID on Friday night and then I lost my passport on Saturday night because apparently I have a very bad drinking problem. 
and <laughs> can't keep up with anything. So I had to show them a long traffic citation that I got the other day to prove that I was 21. And so at this point, like as mad as they want to be, they're just like, who is this guy? What the hell is wrong with him? And I'm like, yeah, whatever. So then they're talking about all the charges that are going to get pressed and I'm like, uh, I'll deal with it later, I guess. And uh, so then they're taking me from the holding area to like baseball jail in the, in the stadium. And I remember, this is Texas for you, en route to the jail, <laughs> there's two guys with their shirts off and beers in their hand, they're like, holy shit, that's the guy! And they're like, we are the fucking man! And I was like, all right guys, and they were trying to give me high fives, I was like, I'm handcuffed, can't do much about this! <laughs> and they're like, woo! So I was like, all right, I got fans now, this is cool. So then they take me down to the baseball jail, I'm kind of sitting there, waiting. The Rangers were down four to three when I did it. And then it was the bottom of the ninth, I'm sitting there with two guards and we hear the crowd just blow up. And apparently the Rangers had just won the game with a walk off in the bottom of the ninth. It was amazing. And uh, the two security guards looked at me and they were like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you made us miss the game, but I, I can't believe this worked out. And uh, so it turns out that the CEO of my company knew the owner of the Rangers. It was Tom Hicks at the time before Nolan Ryan took over. And uh, he called him and was like, hey, that was, that was my boy that ran out there. And he was like, man, that was awesome. Go get him out of there. So I ended up getting off scot-free. I'm sitting there in jail and the head of new business and the CEO of my company come into the baseball jail while I'm sitting there in handcuffs like, hey fellas. And uh, so they end up talking to the guards like, guys, we made a bet with him, but we were totally kidding. We didn't think he would take us seriously. And I'm like, holy shit, I, I, thought, I thought they were being serious. He seemed serious when he told me. And I'm kind of like freaking out a little bit about this time. Like I'm about to just get berated for what he had to go through to get me out of this. So they end up taking the handcuffs off. No one said a word to me yet. Like they walk in front of me, we walk out. They maintain not turning around for me for about 30 seconds once we've gotten out of the baseball jail. And all of a sudden he turns around and just goes, Woo! That was the most awesome thing I've ever seen! And like gave me the biggest hug ever. And I was like, oh, thank God, thank God. <laughs> Total validation. This is amazing. And um, we end up there like, they were super pumped. We walk out back to the tailgate where the other 150, 200 people that we work with are. And uh, I end up getting, they, they put me both on their shoulders. So I'm on the CEO and the head of new business shoulders walking out to the tailgate. Couldn't be any better. And then like out of nowhere there's like this little like Irish midget guy. Like he was, I don't know where he came from. Just came sprinting at us. And so I'm up on the shoulders trying to get to the tailgate and he just jumps on us and knees the head of new business right in the balls. And the whole thing just collapses and we all like tumble to the ground very it wasn't pretty and from then I just remember we got up and I just I got hammered had probably the greatest afternoon I've ever had in my life and I'll never forget going to work the next day about four hours late <laughs> showed up about 11 and uh, uh, I got a standing ovation first off and I remember people coming up to me I'm like man there are two people in this company that can't get fired and you're one of them and I was like sweet Best day of my life, but then a year later, I quit my job. So, still, one of the, one of the best, I'll never forget that day, it was, it was amazing. Mm -hmm.